Hi, this is Shadi and welcome back to another Inoue technical analysis. I've talked a lot about Kose Inoue in the past and there's always something uh, genius and hidden in the aspect of his technique and strategy and we all know that he's very notorious for his Seyoenage, Ochigari, Osotogari and Uchimata of course, but nonetheless he has a set of uh, rare techniques that he had to use in extremely rare situations so as they say the true sign of a champion is adaptability and we're gonna see it and take a look in this video on each scenario and why he had to use the specific technique in order to get uh, the win uh, Kosei in a way is a very interesting man when it comes to strategy he had an answer for almost everything when it comes to size grips etc and the first technique we're gonna be looking at is the Ko Uchigari or the minor inner reap. It is a classical judo technique but very rarely used by Inoue. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at it in the 2007 World Championship against Teddy Rene. Now, after his injury he came back and moved up a class in the plus 100. So here uh, it was very hard to move Teddy Rene whether it is Seoenage, uh, Uchimata etc so he had to resort to sweeping his legs in order to take him down this one is very controversial uh, he got uh, countered as it shows by the referee's decision but uh, here it shows he swept Rene clearly fell down and then took him down with him using his own weight to pull him down uh, you can argue for both sides but I'm very biased towards in a way so I'm not gonna say anything but if I was a referee I would say just call it all off and continue the match that would be the safest bet because uh, you might how do you say be unjust towards someone let's see it again he went inside the leg swept it and then Rene pulled him down and uh, used his own weight to get in a way on the ground as a kaishi waza or a reversal like a kochigari geishi if you want um, again it is uh, still controversial to this day if you go to this video and watch it you'd see all kinds of people arguing uh, defending either side so again I'm not gonna give my opinion I'm very biased in this case uh, he is my favorite judoka after all so the next one we're gonna be taking a look at is the Okuri Ashi Harai or sweeping of both legs and in this one he was in against an extreme uh, left stance the judoka no sleeve even the lapel control was very difficult so he pushed and then pulled the lapel back to him and swept cleanly uh, through both legs as he initiated a reaction by pushing and pulling the lapel uh, he made the foundation of the judoka extremely uh, unstable the legs constantly moving by pushing and pulling the lapel and then sweeping through both of them the next one is a very uh, famous incident against Muneta in the All Japan of 2002 I believe uh, Muneta is shorter and just way heavier than Inoue uh, it was very hard to move him uh, by Uchimata or Ochigari so he had to resort to a clean sweep here Moneta is left-handed by the way and he takes a very high grip and once he broke in a way's posture in a way that something extremely subtle let's take a look at it so here he takes a step forward initiates a reaction from Moneta to follow him and once the leg is lifted it's very easy to clean to cleanly sweep through both of them and here he won by uh, Usegachi or referee decision uh, again a clean sweep uh, using someone extremely heavy just to sweep them uh, effortlessly the next one is the Dea Shiharai or the sweeping of the front foot the first one is against Georgia Zikarauli in the team world championship the same thing a high left uh, grip and then in a way initiates the same reaction by stepping forward or a bit too diagonally and then sweeping the foot that's in front uh, you can argue it's a ko sotogari but uh, it's i would say it's more of a sweep rather than a reap because a reap is kind of like a like a like a shove or like a how do you say uh, like hitting the leg and thus it has like a cleaning effect like a sweep swept effect but here it's clean sweep so i would argue it's a deashi harai this one is a sticky deashi 
Harai against Iliades, not to be confused with Ilias Iliades. Here, he stick his foot and then hops forward in order to have the leg lifted and sweep it and as you pull with the lapel. It is a rare variation of the Deashi Harai, however it is a classical variation nonetheless. We're gonna see it in the Help Sharp production here. So as he put his foot, he also initiates a reaction. Iliadis tries to lift his leg, which makes sweeping even more easier. He gets away with a Yuko. Let's see it here. You stick your foot and then hop forward as you lift with the lapel and pull it and then you get the Ippon. Here it's an Okuri Ashiharai, however the same principle applies. The next one is the Tani Otohoshi and it was against France Le Maire. He did a very genius combination from Uchimata Osotogari getting behind and getting the Tani Otohoshi. Uh, in a way himself said that this is not one of his favorite techniques but again uh, you have to adapt as a champion and if the technique presents itself to you in a match in a crucial match you have to take advantage and just go for it he gets behind and then Tanya Otoshi takes him down with him uh, Le Maire uh, twists but I think he got away with a Yuko the next one is the Koshi Jime and one of the mo the only Neiwaza technique that Kose Inoue ever pulled. He is a pure Tachiwaza man, but he had one pure deadly uh, arsenal, and that is the clock choke. Here we can see uh, he was defending the Seonage, and he grabs it, gets the tap against Bor, and then it's clean upon. Let's see it again. So Kose Inoue, like I said, a pure Tachiwaza man, but when it comes to Neiwaza, he had the Koshijime ready. He whips the lapel and starts to turn. Bor is a very heavy man. As he turns and pushes with his torso down, here he gets him on the ground and gets the tap eventually. So it's uh, different from the normal Koshijime because he's not turning sideways and uh, putting the side of his hips down, but rather his full torso pushing down here against Georgia Jikarali again uh, Georgia uh, Jikarali goes for Uchimata let's see it so they have uh, extreme left stance against right stance here he wraps it around starts to turn and gets the Ippon he also grabs the leg in order to prevent him from escaping so this one is particularly interesting because it was so obvious. I don't know why he did not defend it. Let's see a failed Uchimata attempt. Goes down on the ground. He has his neck fully exposed and Kose in a way grabbing both sides of the lapel. So it's, all he has to do is just whip it around. I don't know why he did not defend it, leaving his neck exposed like this. Uh, but in a way took advantage, started turning around, uh, uh, pressing with his hip down and getting the Yippon. So. Again, another example of that deadly Koshijime, he can either grab the wrist with the other hand or the leg in this case. Here there's another uh, a secret trick to this Koshijime, sometimes the lapel will go to, how do you say, uh, the neck, uh, the jaw, I'm sorry, rather than the, uh, have the neck, so he has like a, a very subtle wrist flick in order to get the Ippon. Let's check it out here. He lifts and then gets the whip. Uh, I apologize fighting films. I love you, but I had to show this. You can consider it free marketing if you want. So he flicks the wrist, lifts the jaw and the chin up and then whips the lapel on the neck. Let's check it out here as a competition example uh, against uh, an Italian. So here, the Italian goes for the Epon Seonage and he fails. Here, there it is. You cannot see it unless you know about it. So again, he gets the tap, pushes with his torso down. Just ruthless and deadly and yet so cleanly uh, executed. Let's see it again. Here, left hand versus right hand goes for the Seonage. Kose in a way moves his waist and shifts his waist. Let's see it. Here, lifts, flick with the wrist and gets the choke wrapped around the neck, grabs the wrist and continues turning. 
he either grabs the wrist or the leg but in this case the leg and the opponent are just way too big so going for the wrist would be a safer bet and gets the ippon so again let's see it quickly and you can notice the flick of the wrist there it is goes down and starts choking so one technique for Neuaza but one technique is enough for someone like Kose Inoue he tapped multiple people there's so much to Kose Inoue uh, when it comes to a technique uh, rare scenarios adaptability uh, sweeping lifting reaping he did it all going down on his knees for Seo Enage uh, the man is arguably a complete judoka even in Neuaza he had one uh, technique in his arsenal and it served him throughout his career that one deadly choke uh, he even has like a rare variation if you want because he's not putting this side of his hip but rather his full torso just pushes down and creates far more pressure against the neck and gets the ippon far easier because as you saw he did not rotate like all the other clock chokes so he just maybe moved half a meter and then got it so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening